things that I've been through, but I'm here. Come on, let's declare it. I am here. Oh, I'm here. Had some ups, had some downs, level to the but I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Had to wrestle, say it. Had to wrestle all night. Wondering what went wrong. Welcome to Second Union Baptist Church, where our mission is to promote spiritual growth, connect with the community, and to promote a deeper connection with God. Our vision is teaching, reaching, and loving. Again, welcome. This is Second Union Baptist Church. We want to remind you all that we do have a prayer line that you can access every Tuesday and Thursday starting at 6.45 a.m. The number and code is on the screen. Using that same number and code, we invite you to our weekly Bible study, which is every Thursday on that prayer line at 7 p.m. If you are watching on today, we do invite you to join us in person every Sunday at 10 a.m. to our drive-in service. The address is on the screen. We do invite you to share it and get a car full and come on Praise on the Lot. We look forward to seeing you. We do have a new way to give. We are now on Givelify. Online giving is up. All you have to do is search Second Union Baptist Church. Find us and you can give and then favorite us. So that way you can continue to give online. If you would not like to give online, we do have two other ways you can give. You can mail it to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 801, Goochland, Virginia, 23063. Or you can join us for morning worship service and hand it in then. This coming Saturday at 10 a.m. online and by phone, our Boys to Men Positive Men's Ministry will host their first life series workshop on finance and investing. This is open to all of our Boys to Men members as well as all of you. So specifically for our Boys to Men members, there will be a special giveaway during this live online service. So you definitely want to watch. Again, join us Saturday at 10 a.m. as we discuss finance and investing. The SUBC Book Scholarship is available. It is available throughout the entire month of July. We are asking that you post market by August 3rd to meet the deadline. This is for SUBC members only. If you would like to apply, please inbox us and we will send you the application. Next Sunday, we will have the service of Holy Communion. If you are watching online and would not like to come in person, we do ask that you please go out and get your elements at crackers and or bread or juice. And again, be ready to take communion next Sunday following morning worship service. In our community announcements, we are excited to announce that Second Union Baptist Church is partnering with Goochland County Public Schools for the Sunshine Food Bus. This will take place on June 21st through July 29th, Monday through Thursdays. And our time slot for Second Union Baptist Church will start from 1 o'clock to 1.45 p.m. This is for Goochland County Public School students, and we look forward to serving our community. Payne's Precious Angels will be putting on their very own car show. That'll take place at the Burning Bush Christian Church. The address is on the screen. They are asking for a $5 donation at the gate and a $20 entry fee for all show vehicles. There will be good food, music, door prizes, and fun. If you would like to participate, you can contact Nikki and Maurice Payne at 1-434-760-1248. The winner of the car show will receive a first place trophy and a cash prize. That'll take place on Saturday, July 10th, 2021 at 3 p.m. And we do have one birthday. We want to say happy, happy birthday to Deaconess Margaret Daniels. We do wish you with many, many more. All right, grab a pen and a piece of paper and get ready for praise and worship. Service will start shortly.
We just praise God for you. We thank God for all of our members. We praise God for our praise team as well as our musicians. We thank you so much for your service. Uh, we thank God for all who helped just put things together and make this day, each Sunday, a success. We're grateful to God to stand before you today. We just, we're grateful to how he have, has blessed us and how he continues to provide for us and look beyond our faults and supplies our each and every need. There's a word from the Lord today. We're not going to hold you long. Um, last Sunday we talked about, I wish you would grow up. And this Sunday, I wish you would grow up part two. And so we just, amen. Amen, because sometimes we don't get it the first time, and to be honest, we don't get it the second time sometimes, <laughs> and so today we're just going to um, add a few more points, and we're going to do a recap of what we dealt with last week, and um, then we're going to go home, amen, you can go and cook on your grills, and, and, and drink your Kool-Aid, amen, amen. Nice tea. <laughs> Y'all had to laugh too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to start today at verse number 25 from the New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 25 from the New Living Translation. It reads as thus, so stop telling lies, let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body, and don't sin by letting anger control you, don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, dear Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all who are watching and listening, dear God. Heavenly Father, we can do nothing without you, and we're just grateful that you are the head of our life. We humble ourselves before you, knowing that your way is always best. Your plans are always best, and we thank you, dear God. Lord God, we ask for your leading and your guidance and your direction in all of our lives. Father God, now, Lord God, have thine own way. Speak with our lips, think with our mind, hear with our ears. Minister by way of your Holy Spirit. Do whatever you see fit that needs to be done within us, dear Lord. And Father God, may we grow 
be more and more like you. May others look at us as we travel through this world and see you in us and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We thank you now, Lord. We will give you all the honor, glory, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week we dealt with moving from a state of immaturity to being mature in Christ Jesus, growing up within our relationship and our fellowship with God. Because it is a shame and a tragedy to be in a relationship with God and to be in fellowship with all the brothers and sisters in Christ to be a part of a ministry, yet and still, there's no growth. There's something wrong with an individual that is in church, in ministry, serving, yet there is no development or advancement in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. It is a shame and a tragedy to remain a baby in Christ forever. And so over the last week and this week, it causes us to examine ourselves, causes us to look at the word of God, look at ourselves, and see what type of development has taken place within our relationship with Christ. Because I just believe that within the process, that there should be progress in our lives than the process of us fellowshipping with God, staying in touch with God, meditating on his word, spending time with him. There is no doubt in my mind that growth will take place if we in fact adhere to those things. Last week we talked about how one, when growth has taken place, when we are becoming and being developed in Christ, when we are in fact advancing in our relationship, as we imitate him more and more, several things are apparent. One, we are dedicated in our doctrine. In other words, we know God, we know we believe in him, and we know why we believe in him. The question was posed that if someone comes to you and asks you to tell them how do you know God is real, would you just stand there and look at them and walk away? Would you take your cell phone out and quickly text your pastor? Or would you have the authority and the power and the knowledge and understanding of who your God is and why you believe in him and why he does exist? in this world that we live in today. We are dedicated in our doctrine when we have reached the stage and when growth has taken place because a baby cannot tell you or give you directions on how to get somewhere. They can hardly talk, they can't walk. All they can do is look, smile, frown, or cry. And it is a shame if we are in a place now that we are in Christ but we still can't give directions to who God is. Wow. We must be dedicated in our doctrine. In other words, we're not being taken by false teachings of the world around us. We're not allowing the devil to deceive us into false things because we know who God is because we take time and we study his word and we are in his word and we take time to listen to God as he pours in to us. You can't give me directions if you never read the manual can't give me directions of who God is if you have not disciplined yourself to find out who he is for yourself. In other words, he says that we must be dedicated in our doctrine. You're spending time in the word of God. 
You're spending time meditating on the word. You're, you're, you're not deceived by the lies and the tricks and the traps of the enemy. Because staying close to God prevents us from traveling down some roads that will cause us harm or, or could, could even um, hurt us by staying close to God and to his word. We can avoid some of the pitfalls that the enemy tries to send our way. And so he says you have to understand that we have to reach a place of maturity, stability, and a place where we are, are standing on firm ground. Christ the solid rock that we stand, that we are not shaken by the things that the enemy sends our way. Second thing, when we are, are de developing and when uh, within the process, uh, we're making progress when we are dedicated in our development. In other words, a growing believer has a deep attraction to the truth of God and we're constantly adapting our lives to the teaching of the Bible. They take the time to find out what God wants for their lives, then they change whatever it takes to line up with his will. That's why I encourage you, what, 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 how, how, or what, how hard is it to dial a number on Thursday night and listen to Bible study? Come on, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about you? Come on. Wow, I was quiet out here. Wow. How hard is it to dial in and listen to the word of God? And I'm sure something will be said to help you in your relationship with God. That's what you're looking for. You're, you're not listening Well, who's teaching tonight. And you're listening. I want to hear the word. Give me the word and God will speak to me through that word. It doesn't matter who's teaching. Uh, that, that has nothing to do with it. But as long as they're bringing the word, there's something that I can gain from the teaching. He says that when we are growing in Christ then we are dedicated in our development. Thirdly, last week we said that we're dedicated in our devotion. Because when we are growing, the growing believer wants to find his place or her place in the body and fulfill that place to the best of his or her ability. When you find that place, your place, not your place and everyone else's place, but your place. And when you function and operate in that gift and the assignment that God has given you, that's when you are effective in the ministry that God has called you to. But when you're running around trying to do everybody else's job and everybody else's ministry, then baby, you can't be effective in what God has called you to do. And so as we enter this section in this passage, Paul begins to talk about the maturing believer's day-to-day -day walk. He focuses primarily on how we act, on how we react, and how we interact. Around with those who are around us are the fellow believers in Christ. And so what I want you to notice is that for the maturing believer, the emphasis in life is removed from self and is focused on others. In other words, it's not about you. Ministry is not about you. Being a servant is not about you. I'm sorry if you thought that, but it's not about you. Being a servant is going out there or helping those who are in need about doing and putting some work in. You know what God did? God pushed us outside of the church so we can put some work in because we've been sitting there too long. We hear a few songs, a word. Some of us barely move, but now God said, you got to move. you got to do something. That's why I like being out here. Everybody's in a rush to go back. 
I like being out because it pushes us beyond the limited. It pushes us outside of the four walls. It causes us to do things that we have never done before. We want to run back in for what? So we can go back to the same old thing. The same old thing. Y'all sat over there, you sat over here, you sat over there. I'm, I'm, I don't want that. I, I don't want the same old thing. Don't be in a hurry to get back to do the same old thing. If this pandemic and, and the situation has taught us anything is that, you know, what we were doing was not real ministry. Come on. Mm -hmm. Were we really serving? Were we really operating wow. in the kingdom effectively? We were operating, but were we operating effectively? That's it. On, that Pastor. is it. My God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm not in a hurry to dress up again either. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Oh, these choices and said is good to me. And so three things, and I'm done. <laughs> so, in this section, first, the Apostle Paul, he tells us that when growth occurs, he told us that it's about how we act and how we react and how we interact. And so you can look at yourself, and, 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 and I'm not the only one. Can't you look back on your life with Christ? at the beginning and you've seen how you acted and how you reacted and how you interacted and so as time moves forward you should be able to see that I act different Amen. I react different that at one time you would have said that to me back in the day and we would have had an issue but now I've learned to forgive and I've learned to allow God to handle my issues and then we learn how to interact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we should see that there is a difference from then or since then and yeah. until now. Yeah. Amen. And so the first thing is we are Christ-like in how we act. Instead of taking what belongs to another to satisfy personal lust, the believer's challenge to go to work so he can make money to help others. The maturing Christian is one who has begun to look, watch this, beyond themselves mm -hmm. to see the need of others. That's why Paul said in Philippians 2 and 4, he says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You may not can help everybody, but baby, you can help somebody. You may not can feed everybody, but you can feed somebody. You may not can clothe everybody, but you can buy somebody an outfit to go on their back. And so he says, not only are we Christ-like like when, we, when we grow and how we act, but then secondly, we are Christ-like in how we react. These four verses, verses 26, 27, 31, and 32, it says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Verse 31 says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Stop allowing folk, this is for someone, stop allowing folk to change your emotions and get you upset. Have you ever just got a phone call from somebody and, and they start talking and, and your blood pressure starts rising? 
Stop allowing folk be able to control your emotions. Stop allowing folk to get you upset. And you're sick and you're dealing with, with issues, health issues, because you allow folk to get you upset and your blood pressure going up and down, up and down. And you're stressed out over what somebody else did or what somebody else said. Just leave, give it to God. Give it to God and allow God to handle it. Ask God to give you peace in the situation, whatever it is. But stop allowing folk to bring you out of your character. What character is that? Your godly character. Stop allowing folk. He says we are Christ-like in how we react. In other words, they speak of learning to control your anger when you are offended and learning to offer forgiveness when you have been hurt. See, the maturing believer does not allow the hurts they suffer at the hands of others to cause them spiritual problems. Amen. Wow. They didn't get you so upset you can't pray. So upset you can't even talk to God. No, the devil is a liar. You're not going to get me to that place where I'm more concerned about what you're saying than spending some time with God and allowing God to handle whatever it is. And so it tells us to be angry without sinning. So how can we be angry without sinning? Because it can only happen when we are angry only about the things that God is angry about. He is talking about righteous indignation. Any other kind of anger opens a position in your life from which the devil can attack. And if you give him an inch, Lord have mercy. So the best thing we can do is just don't let him in. Don't even give him the opportunity. And so we are to forgive them to the same extent, he says, that we ourselves have been forgiven and yes, want to be forgiven as well. We are to do even, do so even watch this. Even if they don't make it right with us. Wow. Even if they don't make it right with us. Amen. Still forgive them. And then lastly, and I'm done. We are Christ-like in how we interact with others. Because when we look at verse 25 and 29 and 30. The verses talk about how we relate to one another. We ought to always speak the truth. Because when we lie to a fellow believer, we are lying to the body of Christ and to others. Wow. Stop lying on folks. Stop lying on me. <laughs> Have to understand that we are to watch the evil speech that try to pour from our Amen. mouths. Because sometimes we want to say some stuff that we should. Amen. Y'all quiet. Sometimes I say and want to say some stuff that I shouldn't say. Amen. And so we need to watch the evil speech that tries to pour from our mouths. When we speak it, watch this, it should be to edify or build up someone else when we speak. Anything else grieves the Holy Spirit of God and hinders the church. How many people have fell from church simply because what someone said out of their mouth? But the mature believer knows this and seeks to control his tongue or her tongue. Ecclesiastes 5 and 3, it says, it is better to be quiet and allow people to think you are a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. 
See, when you're really growing, we become increasingly aware of our sinfulness and weakness. But it causes us to become more sensitive to our dependence upon the Lord. We respond to sin with quick repentance when we are growing in Christ. And as we begin to see the good results of dependence and repentance, our desire is to obey, is to obey, it intensifies, and the attraction of sin lessens. And we're growing, we recognize the potential benefit of our struggles. Because faith is often developed through hardships and maturity is seen in our relationship with God when we begin to view trials and temptations as opportunities for growth. Amen. Amen. You may be listening, you may be watching today. You may not know the Lord as your personal Savior. This is your opportunity wherever you are to give your life to the Lord. Man, woman, boy, girl, whoever you are. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. We're mindful that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But that's why God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you sure about your everlasting life today? Do you, are you in a relationship with Jesus Christ? Is your fellowship with him where it needs to be? <clears throat> all you have to do today is acknowledge that he was born of a virgin, acknowledge that he went to Calvary's cross, acknowledge that he hung there, suffered and bled and died, placed him in the tomb, but on the third day he rose from the grave now sets on the right hand of the Father. Whoever you are today, you can accept them right there where you are. This ask them to come into your life. Forgive me for my sins. Lord, help me to live for you. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you, Lord. We thank you for just having mercy upon us and extending your grace toward us. Bless that person that gave their lives to you today. Bless that person that came back to you today. Lord God, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you, dear Lord, for allowing and causing us to be effective in our servanthood and in our ministries and in our prospective assignments, dear Lord. We thank you, God. We pray for the offering today, dear Lord. Bless those who gave, dear Lord. Bless those who couldn't. Father God, as you bless us, Father God, give us the hearts and the minds, dear Lord, and the capacity to bless others. We thank you now, Lord. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.